Greetings, traveler. I am Snapjelly and Shuriken. Yes, Shuriken, or just throwing weapons in general, they kinda baffle me. They've always just raised a big question mark for me. And the reason behind that is, well, in most cases, they're not really practical weapon, and specifically shuriken, they, it doesn't really make much sense to me to use them. Now, throughout the years, I have tried multiple times to look up any sources that state the usage of shuriken, but honestly, all that I've ever found were modern sources, like enthusiasts speculating about the things, nothing really historical, and this raised my suspicion that I already kind of had, but it raised it, saying that, well, they're not really good weapons. Just talking about the traditional ninja throwing star, right? Because there are multiple different shapes of shuriken. But just talking about the star, for now. It's not really a useful thing to have. I mean, people say that the shuriken was both a battlefield weapon and an assassination weapon, and in both cases, it doesn't really make much sense. I mean, first off, if you look at, at people, I don't have one myself because throwing weapons are absolutely illegal in the Netherlands, but if you look at videos of people throwing shuriken and look at how much those shuriken penetrate, it's not much. It's usually just like, like this much. This, that won't kill you. That's basically what I'm trying to say. If somebody throws a shuriken at you and it sticks right into your gut, ow, oh, well shit, you take it out, you get a relatively... Not really a deep wound, and it's also not really a wide wound because it will be a little, little slit like that, so that won't kill you. It will be a huge annoyance, it will hurt like a motherfucker, but it won't kill you, and on the battlefield it won't stop you. That's what I'm trying to say. So first off, looking at it as a battlefield weapon, just imagine uh, multiple soldiers, soldiers or specific types of soldiers carrying shuriken to battle. Now first off, a shuriken is made out of iron. And you would carry multiple, so you would just basically carry a pocket of iron with you. Just a big lump of iron. And that's going to be uncomfortable and heavy. That's one. Why does not work? Also, think of how many arrowheads you could make out of one shuriken. Just imagine a shuriken would have like four spikes. You could make four arrows out of that. So one shuriken instead of four arrows. How far do you think you can throw a shuriken? I mean, there are, are videos, of course, of people like throwing shuriken, but great distances and fitting precisely in the target, but just, you know, how, how, how often does that really happen, do you think? Like, how common is that? And now imagine just entire volleys of arrows flying, flying that way. What's more practical, an arrow or a shuriken? I'd say an arrow. But all right, you would have shuriken. Great waste of metal, if you ask me, but you have shuriken. Great, now you stand there on the battlefield with your big pocket of iron, you grab one, and you throw it, and you're, you're great with those things, right? You throw it with intense accuracy. Then, of course, you would have to get your opponent, like, straight in an artery, because, like I just said, if it gets him in the chest, ow, oh, fuck, it's not deep enough to get to his heart or to his lungs or whatever, he, nothing happens. So you need to get him right in the neck or in the eye, maybe that'll stop him, or something like that. Otherwise, it doesn't work. But you throw him with great accuracy. You throw him, and then some heavy wind comes along, throws the shuriken off balance, and it plummets to the ground. That's also a thing. Like, a shuriken needs its spin in order to be able to, to fly, right? And as soon as it's thrown off balance just a little bit, it plummets to the ground. Yeah, that's, that's not really useful either. Now, let's say it doesn't, there's no wind. You throw it at shuriken, you throw it with intense accuracy, and it, it flies through the air, and you, it finds your opponent because he's apparently not moving for some reason, it finds a oh, great, and thunk, because he's wearing armor. Yeah, that doesn't work either. <laughs> Come on. All right, another scenario. Let's say your opponent is not wearing armor. Just for the, just for the heck of it. Let's say that. Okay, so you stand there with your shuriken. You throw it, flies through the air. Oh, it, it meets his target, and your target's fighting and fighting and poof, and nothing. Because it's not enough to kill him, and the adrenaline is going to cause him to not feel that, at least not immediately. So the shuriken hits him. He's just going to continue fighting. Oh, kills three of your men. And after a while, when he has the time to take a breath, he's like, oh shit, I've been hit. Oh great, look at that, it's a shuriken, that's weird. So again, it doesn't do anything. Now, there's one final thing that I hear people say, and that is poison. Right? Poison. Shuriken were poisoned, which is also a thing, an assassin thing, but on a battlefield you could use poison, so shuriken were poisoned. Now, 
you would have to poison the entire thing. Just think about that. You would poison like half a shuriken, and you would throw that, and the other half would stick into your opponent, and he still, he still is not poisoned. So that doesn't work. You need to poison the entire thing, and you hold it with your hands. So I hope for you that you don't have any wounds on your hands, no, no cuts or nothing, because then you're gonna poison yourself. Uh, so, but, all right, poison the entire thing, whatever. You also have to carry a pocket of poison somehow, but you poison the entire thing. Uh, I hope for you that you don't have the habit of taking your gloves off with your teeth, like I always do. But okay, enough. You poison the entire thing, and you throw it, and it sticks into your opponent, and I hope for you that that poison kicks in immediately and he drops that on the ground. Because if that's not the case, which most likely will not be the case, then he is just going to continue fighting, um, kills three of your men, then he walks off, but you're going to say, ah, well, he's going to be dead soon because I poisoned him. Thanks a lot. I mean, come on. If you would have done that with an arrow, even an arrow that's not poisoned, which is easier to poison because you, you can dip, just dip the tip in poison, but the arrow doesn't have to be poisoned, you shoot him with an arrow, that, that will go straight through and out of the other side of his body. But no, you throw a poisoned shuriken because that's better. It makes no sense. So I highly doubt that shuriken were really battlefield weapons. Just putting it out straight. It, it just, it really makes no sense, the usage of shuriken. And then as an assassination weapon, because of course shuriken are ninja weapons or sh shinobi weapons. So uh, they would be used in assassinations. Now still, what I said in the beginning, one shuriken will not kill you unless it gets you precisely in an artery. Then it could kill you. So, if that doesn't happen, why would you use a shuriken? Again, you could use the poison thing, I suppose, if, if you're an assassin, but then still, why would you use a shuriken? Because, first off, if you would just kill a person with a shuriken, like, let's say you're like a freaking Naruto ninja, and you have like ten shuriken at the time, you throw them all at once, and make him into a pincushion, then still, he's not gonna be dead. He's going to be incapacitated, it's going to be a huge annoyance, and he's going to be hurting for quite a while, but he's not dead. He would just have a bunch of holes in his body that will just heal, and there you go, he'll live. No problems there. So you could poison, again, the shuriken, and throw that in, into his back or wherever, and there you go, he's poisoned. Now, let's say people don't suck the poison out, then, okay, he's poisoned. Then still, why would you use a shuriken to do that? You could use a blow dart. And I would argue that using a blow dart effectively and accurately would take less practice than using a shuriken accurately. Right? And it's also not like blow darts are, are much much more difficult to hide. I mean, how many shuriken would you be able to hide and, and sit comfortably still? You know, it's not like you carry a pack of shuriken around like you would potentially do on the battlefield. So, again, as an assassination weapon, a shuriken is just not necessary. So, where does the shuriken come from? I mean, we know they were there, we found uh, old ones, you know, in, in the ground and shit, and there are writings about shuriken. Not much of them, but there are some of them, because I asked a friend of mine, Raffaello Urbani, uh, more well known as the Metatron, because he is more well known in, in Japanese warfare, and is also he, he, he appreciates it a bit more than I do, so he's possibly more open about it as well. So I asked him on Facebook if he knew of any historical sources that state the usage of shuriken in warfare or in else. And he said that he knew of one samurai scroll that stated the usage of, sh of shuriken, so it could be used in Genjutsu, as a, which is like sword fighting. And there's one, and only one, ninja scroll, ninja scroll, that states the existence of shuriken, but not even necessarily as a weapon, just, you know, they exist, they're there. So, that kind of confirms my suspicion. Why would you use a shuriken? It's such an odd weapon. Just the idea of throwing a weapon too. I never, I never really got that. You have a weapon. Let's say it's not a shuriken. Let's say it's a knife. All right, you have a weapon, and it's perfectly capable to be a knife or a dagger or whatever. You could use it whatever way you would use a weapon, and this type of weapon, and a knife, and you would throw it away. That's odd. Even if you hit, that is still odd. I mean, you can never rely on a weapon instantly killing your opponent. You have a weapon and you throw it away. I don't get that. And then there are weapons that are specialized on the throwing away. It's so odd. I mean, it's not a really deadly weapon. So why were they... Why have they become so popular? How popular were they back in the day? And if they weren't really, then why are they so popular now? So many questions. I don't know. It's so weird. 
So that's all I wanted to say about that. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. You can click the lovely round button in the screen to subscribe. Also follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash snapjellyr, link in the description below. And thank you for joining my quest and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Bye guys. Ba-bam.